Hello, hello again. This is Brian Gormley with another edition of Where in Greater DC. We continue our march here through the uh, summer tourist uh, season with a yet another uh, highly popular uh, destination. Uh, and I'll leave it at that because this is just another too easy one. I shouldn't even include it. I'm so embarrassed. But uh, <laughs> as people know who've been listening to this blog for a uh, while, um, you uh, you send your guests of our filming location to support at Cornerstone Properties, HomeInfo.com. Be the first one to get it right, and we will give you a free prize, whatever gift certificate we're giving away that week. Uh, so don't be bashful. Go ahead and send your guests in, even if you're the 109th person to watch the video. Uh, you never know. You might be the first one to get it right. Uh, so we're talking about credit unions and short sales uh, this week and how difficult credit unions are. And there's a couple of reasons uh, why that's the case. Uh, first and foremost, most of the time, the smaller credit unions tend to not want to do short sales, or if they do, uh, you know, they uh, they really they they impose really really rigorous terms. We're talking, you know, sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollar promissory notes, uh, you know, cash contributions of thirty or forty thousand dollars or whatever, um, you know, as the case may be. And the reason is because they're holding the paper themselves frequently. In other words, there's a distinction between servicers and investors, as we've discussed before. Servicers are the third-party entities with whom the borrower interfaces. The investor is the one who actually owns the paper. So if you're dealing with Wells Fargo or Bank of America or City or Chase or GMAC or Aquin or SunTrust, uh, those are all servicers. They may own the paper, but chances are they don't. They're just uh, servicing it. They've been hired by the entity that owns the paper, i.e. the investor, to handle all of the property taxes. The hazard insurance, a collection of monthly payments, uh, the phone calls from the borrower, etc, etc, etc. Uh, the investor is the one who owns the uh, the paper, incurs the loss if it goes to foreclosure or for that matter for a short sale. And uh, unfortunately with credit unions case they frequently are the same. So servicers and investors, so they don't have huge balance sheets. They, um, you know, they get their money from uh, members, uh, passbook savings accounts. So they incur any losses, it's on them, and that's not a good thing. So they just have less of a balance sheet. Furthermore, uh, they didn't participate in many cases in many of the large government subsidy programs. So they're not getting, uh, you know, repaid by the government for losses they incur, or part of losses they incur. So they really don't have the backing that some of these other major players do, and as such, they're going to be a lot more rigorous about uh, and aggressive about the negotiation of the terms. We've had just very difficult uh, credit unions and small lending regional banks in the past impose just un unwieldy terms, unfortunately. And you've got to be correspondingly aggressive with uh, your negotiation in order to get that down. Uh, now, you're going to have limited success, I think, in, in doing so because uh, in an appreciating market, the credit unions are not are not dumb. They have only perhaps two or three people in their loss mitigation department, uh, and so it's fairly easy to get to the VP, but at the same time, they, those players know that if they foreclose, uh, then they're paying an REO agent 5% commission, uh, and they may actually do better in six months with price appreciation than they do today with the short sale. So that's what you're up against in today's market. Okay, here's a 360. Don't forget to send your guesses. Support at Cornerstone Properties, homeinfo.com. First person to get it right gets a free prize. Too easy, too easy. Um, this, by the way, is uh, right before the 4th of July, so uh, lots of tents out here. Uh, and uh, for the uh, folk festival that comes, we've been a little disappointed the last couple years with some of the uh, quality of the uh, exhibits, but hopefully this year will be a good year. Uh, in any case, I really do hope that uh, you have a great 4th and uh, safe, pleasant travels for uh, watching the fireworks if, uh, if that's where you're going to be. Thanks very much. See you next week.